Good morning. Welcome to Planet Mojo. Today is day two of the trim work for the tiny house. So, Natalie was out here last night painting and she wasn't feeling that well. It was pretty late too. So she did not get the base done or the plinths. And she had to paint with a brush and you can really see the brush marks on this. So I'm thinking I'm gonna have to hit this with the sander and she'll have to paint these with a roller maybe one of them little four inch ones. I don't know, I'll talk to her about it. My work for today, we cannot finish up the freeze board for the door. This is that board right here over the top, but we can finish up the freeze board for the window. So I'll get that sanded and ready to go. We don't have this stop molding we don't have the cove molding, and we don't have this bigger cap molding right here. We couldn't find that profile. Oh, where's the one we have? Huh, it's around here somewhere. But we found a similar profile, and that's what we're gonna use. So, we should get all three, oh, it's right here. There it is right there. So I'm gonna need to do some kind of a setup. Man, has this seen some use over the years. I probably used this for 10 years. This was an insert into the wing of my saw. And I'm gonna have to figure out a way to clamp this down I think I have kind of an idea. Well, actually I can, no, I can't. These are for mounting the router. I was thinking I could use them. At any rate, we'll figure out how to do it. I'll mount this to something where I can get it on and off so I can change the bit and we'll get the rest of this molding done today with any luck and we'll get this window assembly done four pieces and it's got the sill in there so that has these cuts here then this is routed and sanded and assembled and that'll be ready for paint actually quite a bit to do today so let's get started first thing i gotta do is get rid of this setup we won't be using it anymore this was for the back cuts, if you didn't see that video, these relief cuts on the backs of the base and the casing. So let's get this out of there and get the saw ready. We're gonna use that for this sill. Okay, I was looking at the rough parts for the window jam and they're all still at rough length and they're not sanded yet. And I was thinking I didn't need to sand the edges. I do on the sill, but the edges of this, like this right here, a quarter inch of that's gonna show. So it has to be sanded. So I have a bit of cutting and a bit of sanding to do. I think I'll just come back when it's time to do the layout, the cutting and the shaping on the sill and do the assembly for this. So let me get this sanded and cut to length and I'll be right back with you. I haven't used this in a long time. This has been in storage and this is a metal tape here. It's all rusty. I believe I'm gonna be able to get accurate cuts with this but I'm going to have to do something 
about a miter gauge get a new miter gauge or something we'll see but i'll get this one working for now man is that in sad shape or what all right we're gonna do a test cut and see how square this thing is if need be square it up i can't imagine not having to square it up but we'll see I'm looking at it up to the light, but it's dead on. Okay, so we're off to the races. Let's do the layout on that sill part and then get it cut. Okay, I was looking at this and this five and an eighth did not seem right. So I started playing around with it and I ended up running over to the tiny house twice to get some dimensions. And sure enough, it was wrong. So it needed to move a quarter this way, a quarter inch outboard. But that makes this piece a little too short if I'm going to dado it in to the end like that. So with it a butt joint it's perfect so that's what i'm going to do i'm just going to butt joint it like i did with the door and the window here and i'll just throw two nails in and one screw and it'll last forever all right let's get this part cut and we'll do a little bit of shaping and sanding and we'll get this thing assembled just a little trick for doing blind cuts. This end of this board, this is the one I was testing square with. So put that square up against the fence and then find out where the blade's gonna hit it. I'm gonna have to use two hands for this. And then I'll put a little pencil mark on the table and that will help when I'm cutting this. I'm gonna make one cut on one side and I'll be able to see my line where to stop. But on the other side, I'm gonna flip the board over like that. Then both the cuts are gonna be the exact same width and I'll use that as soon as that matches up with my line on the table, it is right at the end. It will be right here. But that's going to leave a little meat on the inside. I'll saw that out and chisel it flat. And it should be perfect. All right, let me get this set up. And like I said, what I'm going to do is run... A few test pieces. All I did with this is this is a side piece and it has to match pretty much exactly. So I'll just take a side piece, draw my line on there, and then I will sneak up on it. We'll go right in there somewhere. I'll keep moving it over until it's right on the line and then i'll make these two cuts this cut right here is going to be made with the miter well with the miter gauge and then i'll probably flip it over again for this cut yeah that won't be hard i'll set the fence and flip it over hopefully i stop at the right place i have a little bit of play on this stuff because this is going to get the casing is going to go on 
flush with the end right there. So even if I messed up, it would cover it, but I don't want to mess up. All right, let's do a few test cuts and get this sill cut. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, now we'll make these cuts. All right, what I'm doing now is getting my other cut set up. This one, I don't want the end of the board up against the fence, so I have a stop block here. I'm going to play around with it and get it right on my line. Then I can make both of my cuts, one upside down, one right side up, and then I'm going to need to hand saw the, the pieces out of there. Okay, this one came out perfect, and sure enough, I screwed this one up. I knew I was doing it right when I got to the point where it went a little bit too far. But this is how the casing goes on there. Like I said before, it's not going to matter if I cut up into it a little bit, and that's all I did. So we're all good on that. Now I just got to get these out. Well, that makes this one easier to get out. But we have a little bit of wood to get rid of there. I think I'll just use my multi-tool. The only thing that shows on these is this top surface minus where the casing goes. And a bit of the bottom, about an inch and a half, but that gets an apron on it like that as well so a lot of this gets covered up yeah i think i'll just use my multi-tool on that and save a little time and then we'll get the compressor out and get these glued up yeah there's not going to be any cleanup to do getting a little ahead of myself again I have to route all of these outside edges and then I'll have to hand sand them right away. Then we can assemble this. Let's get that done real quick. Okay, when my shop is set up, this next part will be easy, but it's going to be a pain in the butt right now. What I got to do is stand these up 
these long ones on the floor and then nail this piece to it like that put two nails in there and then I'll throw a screw in there so I got to countersink these that's not that big of a problem the problem is I got to set up the air compressor and pull out the air tools and all that stuff it'll be so nice once this is all set up but it's not so let's do all that stuff first we'll lay these out and drill them counter sinks and then we'll pull the compressor out okay here we go i cut a piece of scrap wood the same length as the top member so i just i shouldn't have did that i just need to apply glue to here a little bit on the other side get that all lined up and then fire two nails in there then i'll drill down in there a little bit and throw a nice big screw in there then we'll flip it over do that again and then we'll put that u shape on the ground and attach this basically the same way and then we'll wipe off the glue do a little bit of detail sanding if needed and this will be ready for paint Back when I was doing cabinet making professionally, this was the best gun out there, Senko guns. They're owned by a different company now, so I really don't know if they're still top dog, but it still works really good. All right, I gotta make sure that I have the correct face facing the right way and I do now get a little bit of glue on this side and I'm using tight bond 3 I just started using this, can't really vouch for it, but I've been using tight bond for many, many years. That's the only thing that cabinet shops used to use, and I'm guessing it's still that way. I gotta remember not to wipe this on my pants because it's not coming off. This Tight Bond 3 is waterproof. I've used Tight Bond 1 and 2 pretty extensively, but Tight Bond 3 is somewhat new to me. This wood probably wouldn't split out, but just to be sure. 
got Phillips screws and I barely use them anymore. For that reason, they jump all over the place. So it's hard to find a bit. All right, turn this over. These end grain joints are not the strongest joints in the world. But the screw is going to make it between the screw, the nails, and the glue. It'll be strong as hell. And And it's going to be nailed into an opening as well. Yeah, I haven't used Phillips screws in probably 20 years. I used to use square drive. There we go. Now, get rid of the spacer and make sure that I have the correct side towards me and we'll go get the sill. All right now this one goes on right like that but it's kind of floppy and it's going to tend to get glue all over the place because you need to glue both sides. Get this down at the bottom so it doesn't want to fall over. Okay. Just a dab on here. Smooth that around a little bit. And I have different screws for this one. I'm going to back this whole thing up so I can reach the gun on the bench or the table saw. And here we go. Try to get both sides right where they need to go so I don't smear the glue all over the place, but a little bit of that is bound to happen. All right. Beautiful. 
adjust this as needed and throw the next nail in that's better yeah this side slid all over the place but we'll clean that up in a bit Once you throw that first nail in there, you can adjust it a little bit. Perfect. Little bit longer screws. All right, that little bit of squeeze out there, we're gonna let that dry for about a half hour or so, and then just get in there with a straight razor blade and get that out. Just the depth. All right, and now we'll do cleanup pass at four. All right. I need to cut this to 7 8 in both dimensions. 7 8 would be right here and right here. But if I cut it right to 7 8 right now, I won't have enough meat to ride against the fence to make this cut. So I'm going to cut it to an inch and a half, then do this cut, and then come back and cut it to 7 8 here. Hope that made sense. Okay, this is the cutoff from the molding I just made. And this molding, it actually called for a 5 8 inch cove. I don't have a 5 8 inch cove bit and there's no way I'm going to buy one just for this single stick. We're going to be doing this again in the house and I think I'm going to buy the 5 8 inch bit then but for just a single window this is going to look just fine. Now what I got to do is sand the edge and then take a slice then sand the edge again and then take another slice and then sand both of the parts. That's these right here. I need two of them at 7 16 and they're already the inch and 16 thick. So a lot of sanding on these last couple parts, but that'll wrap it up for today. Okay, that's going to wrap it up for today. Really glad I got that done. Didn't get a whole lot done, but it just takes so darn long to do stuff out here. My only power supply is that extension cord right there, so I have to move it outside, over to the miter saw, over to the saw, and move it over there to route, over here for the compressor, and then it's back and forth, back and forth really a pain in the butt but that'll be over soon we have part of the electric in and we're gonna have the service drops for the machine soon so 
We'll be all done with that nonsense. I really need a bench though, really bad. So I have my stops. This is for the door and the window. The cove, which is just for the window. And again, this gets apron underneath it, which is yay wide. And then the cove goes along the outside of that and returns to the wall. And the stop goes at the top. Let's see if I can show you that. The stop, oh, here's the door. The stop goes along the freeze board, the bottom of the freeze board, and caps off the casing. So when you install this, you got to figure out your exact length, get it cut, and then that gets attached to the freeze board, and then the whole thing comes down. And it's not really attached, it's attached to the wall, but it'll be on top of the casing. And then in this case, I got to make everything work out so that this cap molding goes all the way around the room as a crown. And I'll put something else below this, probably square with the same little radius on the bottom edge, probably kind of like this, but only rounded on one side. Maybe not as wide as that, maybe just three quarters. Something like that to differentiate it from the cap molding itself, the stuff that's above the door and above the window. The window is like down here. This, the way it worked out, this goes within a little bit of the ceiling. So we're just gonna move it right up to the ceiling and then adjust the width of the freeze board to match it. It may not make sense, but it will once I start putting it in. Actually, this shows it a little better. There's the freeze and there's that stop. So this is basically one big assembly, but in this case, this is gonna run all the way around the room. And my base shoe, that is a half by three quarter. So I can cut that out of basically anything, but I do have one piece that would need to be 12 feet long. I can actually splice that. You'd never see it anyways. All right, so day three of this, I'll be cutting all of this molding and the shoe. So if you want to see that video or me installing all of this, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comment section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.